Welcome everyone. Welcome to beginning an exercise program. My name is Rachel. I'm a registered dietitian and then also joining me for the webinar today is Robert who has been our personal training and been personal training for several years. So we wanted to put together kind of a, some tips and tricks on beginning a new exercise program, what's important with selecting your exercise, nutrition, hydration, all that fun stuff so you feel confident and ready to begin whatever program um, you're trying to start, whether it's something brand new if you're not a frequent exerciser or uh, you have a specific fitness goal in mind. Without further ado, we'll get into it. We have to start with the less fun slide because um, it's important that we exercise safely. So if you experience any of, these, any of these symptoms, it's a good idea to check with your doctor before beginning your exercise program so that you know all of the information you need to, to select your exercises safely. So these include chest, neck, jaw, or arm pain at rest or during physical activity. If you've experienced dizziness, lightheadedness, or fainting with mild exertion, unusual fatigue or shortness of breath during your usual activities, lower leg pain when you walk, which goes away when you rest, and then if you are pregnant and were not exercising prior to pregnancy, and if you've been diagnosed with heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes, and you do not normally exercise, these are all reasons to check with your doctor first just to make sure you're ready to do so safely. All right, and then less severe but still really important things to consider here, sleep. If you get less than six hours of sleep a night, this can drastically increase your risk for injuring yourself during an exercise regimen. So make sure you get those Zs, and if you don't, that might be a reason to reduce your intensity or maybe even forfeit exercise and call that your rest day to give yourself an opportunity to get some more sleep the next night. Hydration and nutrition status, making sure we are fueled and ready to exercise so that you're able to go at the capacity that you want to as well as doing so safely. And then of course, if you're sick, if you're vomiting or you have diarrhea, these can severely dehydrate us. So we wanna make sure we're feeling healthy enough to exercise and reducing intensity or calling it a rest day if we're not. So be sure to listen to your bodies here, right? All right, getting into the fun stuff, hydration. So a lot of different factors affect our hydration. It's not just the water we drink, right? Um, the air temperature that we're exercising in can, if it's really hot, it can dehydrate us more quickly. The intensity and the duration of our exercise. And then of course, our fluid and electrolyte consumption all affect how hydrated we are, right? So one of the main purposes of being fully hydrated is thermoregulation during exercise, right? That sweating and the heavy breathing we do expends water to help keep us cool during our exercise bout. It also helps with waste disposal. So when we're exercising, we're using energy at an accelerated rate. We need muscle um, energy delivery to our muscles. They're metabolizing it and therefore waste products um, come along with that. And so we need water and electrolytes to help dispose of those metabolic waste products, which not only helps with our recovery and our overall health, but um, can help reduce the recovery time that you have when we're fully hydrated. So I get this question a lot, um, do I need to drink sports drinks? And it really depends on the person and the intensity of the exercise. Generally for you know overall health and wellness, I don't really recommend sports drinks because they're really high in sugar. And that level of sugar is really only necessary for people who are exercising at incredibly high levels, athletes, marathon runners. Otherwise, we get electrolytes from our food consumption. So most tropical fruits have all of the electrolytes we need. Sodium and potassium are probably the most commonly known, but we also need magnesium, calcium, chloride, and phosphate for proper waste disposal and hydration. And so you get all of these from oranges, bananas, watermelon are great examples, dairy products, lots of different foods that can act as complete electrolyte replacements for us, right? Uh, another great one is coconut water. If you like that liquid, that immediate like replenished feeling, coconut water is a great one. It has all our electrolytes without as much sugar. So that's definitely a good option there. 
nutrition. So before our exercise bout, um, usually recommend a balanced meal two to four hours prior to our exercise session. And by balanced meal, I mean something that has carbohydrates, fats, and protein in it. So this is a good example in our picture down here. We've got a little protein from our chicken, some fat from our avocado, and then the rest of those products are mostly carbs, right? And if it's been longer than that since you've had your last meal, then I usually recommend having some kind of small snack 30 to 60 minutes before your workout, something that's mostly carbohydrate with maybe a little fat or protein in there as well. That'll give you the fuel you need to actually do your exercise bout, right? And then as far as post-exercise for recovery and getting on with our day, protein gets a lot of hype, but you actually want a fair amount of carbohydrates in your post-exercise meal as well. And that's because we don't only have protein in our muscles, but we also store glycogen in our muscles. So that is the storage form of carbohydrates. So optimally, a two to one carb to protein ratio with some electrolytes is a great post-exercise snack. And there are additional benefits found with this when you consume it within 30 minutes after your, after your exercise bout, your workout. And so we get the additional benefits of preventing lean muscle mass breakdown, um, which can therefore increase your fat oxidation if you're not using muscle for energy, right? We get protein and carbs for uh, building our muscles and then repairing the tissue that, you know, we just worked in the exercise bout. And then, of course, helping with waste removal, like we talked about with the electrolytes. So having a snack within that 30 minute window can be very helpful for helping you recover from your exercise as well as helping you reach your goals quicker. So some good examples of that two to one carb to protein ratio, uh, Greek yogurt with a little granola or fruit, or when I say sugar added, usually that's the sugar that's already added to the yogurt that you buy in the store. Um, the yogurts that are higher in sugar can actually be a really good pre post-workout snack. Not that you should have that as a full meal, right? But these are great examples of what you can do immediately after your exercise bout. A peanut butter and banana sandwich. Uh, chocolate milk, believe it or not, is a perfect two to one carb to protein ratio. Uh, protein bars and coconut water and then nuts and fruit are all good combinations that you can grab and go after your exercise. Rachel, I have a question on this one. On the, I, I like chocolate milk. It, what about like unsweetened almond milk? I'm trying to stay away from the sugar, but um, do you recommend just regular cow milk in this case? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, almond milk, no, almond milk can be a great addition as well. Again, it's about that carb to protein ratio when we're looking at getting that additional benefit of recovery post-exercise. So that's really what these snacks are about are preventing our lean muscle mass breakdown, giving you that energy you need to uh, both, you know, re-energize so you're not exhausted the rest of the day after our exercise, and then also building and repairing that muscle that we just worked. So that's kind of the idea here. So almond milk is absolutely a great option. I don't ever recommend, you know, one dairy product um, over plant-based products. It just depends on, on, if you check the label, you can see uh, if I have 15 grams of carbohydrates, to um, what is it, uh, eight grams of protein, then that would be a perfect ratio, right? That two to one carb to protein. So that's kind of the idea here. There's absolutely more snacks that can go on this list, right? This definitely isn't an end all be all list. It just gives you some ideas of what you can do quickly for like a grab and go after your workout. See, does that answer your question? Yes, thanks so much. Thank you. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Robert now. He's going to take you through some of the exercise pieces here. All right, so getting into our physical activity um, section, we're good. We always want to start our workouts with a warm up. Um, the purpose of a warm up is to warm up muscles and joints, and warming up those muscles and joints will help. Um, also decrease the risk of injuring any muscles or joints while you're working out. So these are some common questions that I get about warming up and we'll just go through them one by one. Is warming up necessary? 
um, what if I am running late? I always say yes, warming up is necessary. Even if you're running late, you can do a shortened warm up uh, leading into a shortened um, workout. But again, warming up is definitely necessary if you want to decrease your injury um, risk. Um, does your warm up have to be quick, high intensity? No, it does not. Yes, high intensity gets the heart rate up and gets the muscles warmed up quicker. But if you start low intensity and kind of build to that higher intensity, um, you're still going to be setting yourself up for success in your workout. Um, what should my warm up routine look like? Um, again, like I said, starting off with the lower intensity, um, just kind of moving around and then building up to a higher intensity of doing um, sort of exercises or moves that you're going to be doing in your workout routine. So if I'm going to be doing like back squats um, with a barbell in my workout routine, I probably want to be doing some sort of air squats or um, something like that in my warm up routine to get those muscles firing and ready and in that same uh, movement pattern that you're going to be in in your workout. Um, what if something doesn't feel right while warming up, um, such as muscle or joint pain? Um, I would try to take that muscle or joint through a couple different other uh, movements to see if it responds a little bit better to warming up. But if you're still feeling pain um, in that area, I would kind of take that, that muscle or joint area off for the day if you can. Um, and then if it, you're still feeling pain um, after that, then kind of it's probably best to go get it checked out just to make sure um, it's not something serious that you don't want to make worse. All right, next slide. So getting into our workout after our warm up, um, what is your your past present level of fitness? So this is <clears throat> What's gonna uh, make or break your your workout is if you because if you're you're someone who's new to working out and you do something that's out of your fitness level, then you're 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 gonna have a higher chance of getting injured. So what is that past or present um, level of fitness, and that's gonna dictate kind of what kind of workout you're gonna go, get into. Also, your fitness goals. If you want to lose weight, but you're not doing any cardio, and you're only lifting a whole bunch of weights, you're only going to get to a certain point of that fat loss goal if that's um, your goal. And also, if your goal is to build a bunch of strength um, and all you do is cardio, you're going to hit that plateau at some point. So what should my exercise selection be? Um, I usually tell people start off with full body exercises um, because you're going to burn more calories and get strength benefits from those exercises. And then as you kind of get more into a routine, then you can start breaking it down into upper body, lower body, push, pull, all that kind of stuff. Um, a common question I get from women is, will I get bulky if I lift weights? And the answer to that is no. unless you want to because there are female bodybuilders and whatnot, but it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of work um, to get bulky lifting weights. So if you if you work out a few times a week, do your, your doing your strength um, workouts, you will not get bulky. Don't even worry about that. And then a question that I get from males, do I actually need to work out my legs? Yes, you definitely need to work out your legs. Um, you don't want to go around looking like an upside down triangle, right? So legs definitely need to be worked out, uh, especially if you're trying to lose weight because they are the biggest muscle groups in your body. So you'll burn um, calories uh, quick that way by working out legs uh, and also getting them stronger. Next question I get is how much time do I have to work out? I say you can get a good workout in 30 to 45 minutes, but just do 
as much as you can in your allotted time. If you have 20 minutes, you can still get a good workout in. You just have to raise your intensity. Um, how often do I need to work out? I usually say uh, most days of the week, so three to four, four being that, that goal that you should have. Um, but again, the more the merrier on those with at least one rest day per week. All right, next slide. So our workout duration, <clears throat> here's the recommended guidelines, 150 minutes of moderate intensity um, workout minutes is going to be uh, per week for that. And then 75 minutes of vigorous intensity, which is like your HIIT style training, um, something that keeps the heart rate in that above 70 percentile range. Next. Motivation. Um, yeah, I think Robert brought up some really good points about um, trying to shoot for that 30 minutes a day when we're exercising. But it's not just about, you know, getting the workout in and getting yourself to exercise, reaching your goals, but how do people maintain these goals? And I think as far as motivation goes, um, and not only what we've seen, but also what they've they've found in studies is People that maintain their exercise for years and years and don't fall off the wagon, they have internal motivators um, in addition to or instead of external motivators. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, when we think about how do I want to look or how much weight do I want to lose, uh, am I trying to please somebody with, with these fitness goals that I have? These are all great ways to start and, and start motivating us to exercise. But there has to be something more than that if you're going to continue it and make it, you know, a true lifestyle change. And so by internal motivators, those would be how do I feel after the exercise? Have I picked something that, you know, gives me that those happy post exercise endorphins, right? Um, do I feel energized? Do I feel ready for the day? And then do I enjoy the exercise itself? Um, some people, people that exercise long periods of time and, you know, stay on that bandwagon, typically they enjoy what they're doing. So finding what exercise really motivates you, I think, is a great starting point, especially if you haven't tried out a lot of classes or you haven't done a lot of exercise in the past. Just start with walking or take a dance class. Um, try out a beginner level strength class and see what um, yoga, see what it really enjoys you enjoying clicks with you. All right. Do I need a personal trainer or coach? <clears throat> um, if you have any fitness goals or want to lose weight or gain strength or need help with your accountability, um, or if you answer yes to any of these questions, then yes, you do need a personal trainer or coach. Um, I have one. I know a lot of personal trainers that have trainers or coaches that help them out with um, their exercising or exercise goals. Um, if at anything, you can at least go in for a free consultation and kind of get set up um, in the right direction, whether that's with a personal trainer or coach or if you feel like you want to do it on your own, that consultation can definitely help. Um, and then if you're just lost, lost in your, your kind of your workout journey or need some, something new or something more fun, some different sort of, um, challenge for yourself, I would say definitely reach out to a, uh, personal trainer or a coach and kind <clears> of <throat> get help, um, from them and get a little bit of accountability because who doesn't need more accountability um and yeah just kind of i would say try it out because that consultation is free like i said um they can bring up probably a whole bunch of points that you wouldn't even have thought about if you wouldn't have um, tried that consultation uh they can again point you in the right direction towards your goals and then just having that accountability of um, someone kind of being there for you and watching over you if you need that is just so helpful. And um, 
can get you to your goals faster in the long run. So yeah, thanks. All right, this is where I stole all of our fabulous photos from. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for joining.